Well, it's preached on choked wells. Choked wells. Not whales, but wells. Oh, you get water out of them. Wells. Choked wells. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward. Lord God, we all need to go forward, amen. And grew until he became very great. And he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds, a great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. <laughs> hey, you live right in Devil's Cow, be jealous of you, amen. And the Philistines envied him. That's just their bad luck, amen. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us. For thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again. <laughs> and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Glory to God. Right there, I want you to put in your mind, do it like Papa did. Amen. And Isaac's service digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Well, that's fresh water, that is. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of it, of the well, Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well. And strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Let's pray. Father, come to you in Jesus' name. Bless the reading of the word of God today. Thank you, Father, that we have an opportunity to read such a wonderful story. I pray, God, you'd bless the reading this morning, bless the hearing of it. And God, touch these lips, hides behind the cross. And Lord, I pray that folks might realize, God, there's some digging to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you about choked wells. The definition of a well is a pit or hole dug down in the earth to the water level. If you dig down deep enough, you'll strike water. Right. If you dig down deep enough, you can hit the rock. Sparks will fly upward. But you've got to do some digging to get any results. Yeah. The wells of our fathers may get choked up. America was founded on some wonderful, wonderful things. Yeah. Founded upon the Word of God. Yeah. Pilgrims came in 1620. This book was written in 1611. Yeah. Nine-year-old book. America was founded upon the original King James Version of the Almighty Word of God. Yeah. And still the book today right. for me and you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We was grounded and founded on godly things. And but we see today that the children are thirsty. Yeah. This generation we got today is thirsty. Yeah. They are not satisfied with the world that they live in. It's yeah. a pitiful sham of a, a world. Wicked as the devil and full of hell on every street yeah. corner. Right. Our children are going to perish without God unless they get some living water. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Gotta read them wells, friend. Get back to the book. Back to the Bible, back to the blood, back to prayer, back to faith, back to God. Get back to the old path. Back to the fundamentals. Back to where this thing's real. And so we need to redig and re-clean out them wells for the fountains to fill up. Down in Mountain, North Carolina, I worked at Burke Yarns, and there's a guy who worked there from over on South Mountain. And he's going to marry this girl, and the girl's dad said, You can't marry till you get a well. He said, Brother Sam, you help me dig a well. I said, I'll help you dig a well. So we went over there and it, it, it got down about 25 feet deep and hadn't struck no water yet. But we dumped the, dumped the dirt on the lower side of the hill so the water would so make the water back up and be deeper when it leveled out. Like adding some water, 
ground to the low side. We didn't realize that when the rain came, it was going to hit that water come right back in the hole. <laughs> so he was down in there digging about, about 25 deep, feet deep after a while. And I was going down to the house because it started to look like it was going to rain. So I went down, got on the front porch with the rest of the family. And we were sat talking, you know, joking, cutting up, carrying on. And it come a toad, a toad choking, gully washing tadpole transporter. I mean, water was coming every direction. It was raining hard. We were sitting back on there and letting it rain. Well, we thought, well, if it rained, better go check on him. About the time I got about 100 yards from him, I heard him screaming. He had turned that five-gallon bucket upside down, was standing on it, and water up here. <laughs> he he was drowned if it rained another five minutes. But, friend, what I'm trying to tell you is we had to dig to get the water out of the well, the old water out before you were come in. We never did get that well dry because water had seeped in on top of the rock. At, at rain, it never went dry. So what we thought was a bad thing about to drown him, God gave us water. But God knows how to give you the water if you really need the water. That old boy worked hard, 25 feet deep, and then hit solid rock. That's pretty good hard work. Helped him a little bit, not much. I almost helped him drown. What I'm trying to tell you is a well is full of water. We need some water, friends. We need the wells of salvation, the Bible talks about. We need the wells of wisdom. We need the wells of prayer. We need the wells to be redug and cleaned out and get where they work again. Things ain't working like they used to work. Old timers remember the good old days and young folks like the, uh, the fireworks and so forth. What about the power of God come back to yeah. But we must dig. Isaac dug like a mole. I mean, he was a well digger. He dug wells everywhere all the time. He was a well digger. He, he wasn't afraid to dig the well. We got folks today just will not do anything come on, come on. if it ain't eating. We've got to start working again. Start doing some things. Start redigging and cleaning out them old wells that used to be so full of sweet water. Sweet water. You know the old time Holy Ghost meetings where the power of God come down, folks be shouting, clapping their head, running the aisles, and get on the altar, getting right with God, praying, folks get healed, folks get revived, folks get blessed, and folks happy then. Find, hard to find a happy face anymore. You know that? Hard, hard, hard to find a happy face. A smiley face that's on a track somewhere. We've got to get a smiley face again. Get happy. Shout the victory. Praise God. Let the world know Christianity is a good thing. It's fun. It's wonderful. And I love it. Changes your life. You've got to get the old wells cleaned out, friend. So this man named Isaac was a well digger. Great problem with us in our church today is men and women just won't dig. Yeah, come on. Won't dig. Somebody comes to, to, to get saved and it won't be 10 people come pray for them. Come on. I remember back in Mountains, North Carolina, when I got saved that night, the whole, the whole church was hovering over me. i come up for breath and go back down. They, 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 was, they was praying. I mean, the power of God came and it fell. And I got my life changed that night. Yeah. We need to pray for one another. Yeah. Not pray that the preacher shut up so we can go eat, but pray. That we get somebody saved by the grace of God. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Change their life. Take that bottle out of their head and deck of cards out of their pocket and cigarettes out of their mouth and get their knees on the floor. We need some old camel need prayer warriors again. Men and women that ain't afraid to bow their knee, bow their back, bend their uh, head for Jesus Christ and pray unto God with the power on them until something happens. You'd be a group in Louisville called Push, USA, pray until something happens. I don't know what it was. don't know much about it. But I do know it used to be a group like that. But we need to get back to that again. Yeah, yeah. Pray till something happens. Yeah. Not to get tired. But pray till something happens. Right. You'd be an old boy. He said, pray till you get through. Bob Lamb said, when you get done, you're through. That ain't what he meant. He meant pray till you get something done. That's what he meant. Pray through. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Pray through. Yeah. Pray till God shows up and gets, gets a job done. But it's, it's the thing about this digging in wells. The great parable in Jesus talked about there in, in Matthew about the man who dug down and put his foundation of his house on a solid rock. When the winds came, the rains came, the floods came, the house stood still because it was founded upon a rock. But the foolish man who doesn't build his house upon the rock, the word of God, when the rains came because his house was built upon the sand, the foundation washed away and the house fell and great was the destruction of it. We're building shallow today. We're not getting down and hitting the rock. Give you an illustration. When I was 14 years old, I joined church. They baptized me. Didn't do me no good. I was 20 years old, got born again. That, that helped me. Yeah. We were filling our church full of bus children, and I'm not against busing, who raise their hand, sign the card, check the box, get wet, and go to hell. They must 
be born again. They got to hit the rock. They got to get a foundation that will not crumble. They got to get some steadfastness, some security, something bless God they can feel and know it's real and live by it and to guide their life down through life. Church. We need to get it right, friend. Dig and keep digging, keep on digging till you get deep enough. Verse 32, they said, we have found water. Have you ever dug down deep enough to really get a good drink? <laughs> I mean, if you died right now, would you go to heaven or hell? You can't go to both. But you got to go to one. Choose you this day. Who are you going to serve? Where are you? If you died right now, have you really been on the rock? He's on this rock. I'll build my church and the gates of hell. Shall not fail against you. Have you reached the rock? Have you dug down and hit the rock and the sparks flew upward? Have you got down there and got a good drink? You see, oh. the water level's right there on the top of them rocks right underneath the dirt. When you dig down and hit that rock, you get a, we have found water. The greatest shout they had back in those days is, we have found water. There wasn't a lot of water back in those days. Still are today because of modern technology, but back then you had to dig to find water. Today, folks want it piped to them. They don't dig, they want you to pipe to them. See, that boy over there in South Mountain didn't have city water. So he had to have some water before he could marry that girl. And he dug, he had blisters all up his elbow all over. He loved her. And if you really want to get old time, heartfelt, blood bought heaven sent salvation, you'll dig. You'll dig. And you won't quit till you get it. Watch it, friend. So dig, keep on digging. You can tell a man who digs. When he hits the rock, sparks fly upward. He's got fresh water every day. <laughs> a man who digs has fresh water every day. He knows what he's doing. He has daily Bible reading, daily Bible prayer, daily prayer to God, talk to God. He has his own song to sing. He has his own tale to tell. Have you got a testimony? Have you got a witness? If you're in the mountain side of the road, he said, can you tell me how to get saved? Could you do it? Could you even tell him how you got saved? In some detail. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. That'll get anybody saved if they say that. If it works. But you've got to do some repenting. We've got pulpits, we've got pulpits of legends in them. Claiming they're preaching the gospel. We've got problems in America today because we've left the foundation, left the fundamentals. We didn't get to the bottom of the well and get a good drink. Shallow religion. So shallow that it washes away when a little bit of storm shows up. He's not a doubter, but he's a believer. He's a shout who praises God, worships God, loves, loves the old time way. I'm not a bit apologetic for being an old-fashioned, born-again, blood-bought, heaven-saved child of God on my way. I'm a bit of sh- not ashamed of it. It's real if you got it. If you ain't got it, it's kind of ain't real. Pray you hit the rock, friend. Pray you get down to that living water. Pray till you get to dig, dig, dig. Others who won't dig are envious of those who do dig. It says so right here. Verse... Uh, Verse 14. And the Philistines envied him. Have you ever somebody in the church ever heard him say, oh, he, he, he thinks he's something. Yeah. He is something. You can be something too if you try. Yeah. <laughs> this was the well diggingest man they'd ever seen since Abraham. His daddy. Dig like Papa did. Dig like the old man did. I remember years ago we had all our prayer around here like we did this morning, and there's an old man named Ellis Lobb. He got three kids in church here this morning, two of, two of them anyway. And he somehow would be, he wouldn't quit, so he kind of got his head up on the communion table. And that's when he got the Holy Ghost right there. <laughs> Son, he come out with his face, blood, bread, yeah. shouting and jumping up and clapping his hands, and some people looked at him like it's kind of funny, the rest of them shouted with him. Yeah, Man, if you can dig down and hit the rock, it'll affect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember old brother Pinder? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
he hit the rock. You can tell when he got something, he hit it off. Friend, there's got to be some kind of results. Yes. When the sparks flies upward, y'all see the light of it, amen. amen. Something happens if you dig deep enough, you'll come up with something. But this old man named Isaac, he's the well deepest man they'd ever seen. They said, that's our well. You can have it, I'll dig me another. That's my well. You can have it, I'll dig me another. You just can't stop a well digger from digging wells. He's a digger. He's a well digger. He wants to dig wells. About 60 years ago, Opal Pinson bought a little two-room house down here. He sold it to this church for $4,000. And today, this place stands for a man Dove and hit the rock. Yeah. This church has been standing here for 60 years because a man was on the rock. Yeah. If you get on the rock, what you build will stay on the rock. Yes, It'll stand the storms of time and eternity. God said on this rock, I'll build my church. And you can't destroy God's church. Because it's founded upon that rock, and that rock is Christ. Yes, sir. Others who won't dig were envious of the man who would dig. Isaac was the well diggingest man that they had ever seen since Abraham, his father. There's always room for more well diggers. Did you know that? You don't have to sit back there by yourself and let everybody else do the work. I can't sing, but I'm in the choir. I drag it down some, but I'm in it. You can find something to do, praise God. Dig, dig, dig. Be a well digger. I've never seen a well deer yet had clean clothes on. Right. It'll show up on you if you get to work. There's always room for more well diggers. Verse 22. Well, let me go to point number two. The wells had already been named by Abraham. You're not going to discover nothing new. You're just going to uncover the old that's not being used. You see, the fish ain't stopped up the wells and filled them full of junk. So they couldn't get in the water. If you'll clean them wells out, there's water still there. A lot of y'all sitting here today used to be a shouting, happy Christian. Now y'all backslid and mean and grumpy and crouchy and couldn't get a smile out of you or amen out of you. Stick your pen or something. We've got to wake up and get back to the old pays. Back to the foundations. The Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? If the old time way gets destroyed, what's the righteous going to do? Yeah. If we change our Bible, where it makes everybody go to heaven uh -oh. just because you're a somebody. If you don't have some law and order and some ordinances and some bylaws and some constitutions and some doctrine, if you don't have something to live by, you'll fall for everything. Yeah. Uncover them old wells. Yeah. Dig them out, you well diggers. Go down to you hit the rock and get the garbage out of your life. Yeah. You know how some folks, folks can't pray in their closet? They ain't room. Come on. They ain't even room in your storage shed. We got so much junk, our mind is on junk rather than on Jesus. Junk, junk, and go to Jesus. We've got so much possessions that we don't have time to dig for Jesus. We need to clean out the junk, clean out the garbage, and get to the root of the matter and find some good springing water. Amen. Jesus told that woman to well. If you ask me and I'll give you living water. Yes. Springing up inside of you in your everlasting life. Yes. Real stuff. Uh -huh. When they did the sacrifice for the leper, they took springing water. Not stagnant, stale junk like that. You know what stagnant water is good for? Wiggle tails. <laughs> they make muskators. <laughs> and musk ain't good for nothing but butt, blood, 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 blood sucking and backbiting. <laughs> We need some springing water. We need something that runs right on top of ground, rock level at the bottom of the dirt. If you'll dig down, my friend, like a well digger, and you'll hit that rock, and you'll say, glory to God, we got water coming down. We never could dip that well dry because it found some water. Kept filling up. If you hit the rock, it'll keep on filling up. If you get that real living water, it'll never go dry. <laughs> Bring it to everlasting life. I've been serving God for 61 years. Hands running, hands running, hands running. And I've never thirsted 
after nothing else. Offer me the world and you can have it. Just let me have my Jesus. And me and Brother Sam was singing a while ago here at the altar before everybody got started. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. Amen. No turning back. Amen. I promise you, if you'll just keep on digging, it gets sweeter and sweeter the deeper you get. You never run out of a place to dig. Just keep on digging. Hey. Over Luke chapter 16, verse 3, the Bible talks about an unfaithful steward. There come time for the judgment. You know what he said? The dummy. He said, to dig, I cannot. And to beg, I'm ashamed. Well, if you're too proud to dig and too proud to beg, you just go to hell. I'm a beggar. You're a beggar. Hey, yes. Nobody deserves heaven. You've got to beg and plead and repent and call on God and believe and trust. God's mercy is good, but you've got to ask for it. Dig. Get serious. Grab your Bible. Read it every day. Find your place to pray and pray every day. Find somebody to witness to and witness every day. Do, do, do. He said, preach not safe, but do it. No, bless God, if you are saved, you ought to do something. That's right. Faith without works is dead, by the alone. He said, show me your faith, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You're not saved by your works, but you're saved to do some work. We've got to get serious about this digging thing. Nobody's working very hard anymore. The children are thirsty. The next generation will come up, what are they going to have? Yes. What's the next generation going to have? God help us. But it's a great thrill when they hit water. Verse 32 said, we have found water. They had worked so hard with such expectation that they thought of the wells as new wells. But they weren't new wells. They were old wells redug. Old wells cleaned out. Don't look for another gospel or a new something. Just get back to the old pace. They've been working there since Jesus died on the cross. Yes. Clean out the wells. Well, Grandma had a well in North Carolina for on Highway 8, uh, 64, 70. On Deacon's Chapel Road there, she had a well. And they filled it in after she died. That broke my heart. I used to go up there and on the, had this little thing here, a piece of a log about that long, rope around and crank it up and set the bucket and had a weight on the bus, so it turned over, you got down to get water, I'd swing the lid back, drop that bucket down there, and roll it back up, and get the dipper, get me a drink that way, and that water had mica dust in it. You couldn't see it, but when the sun shined in the water, it sparkled. Didn't hurt you, we drank it all the time. Matter of fact, we liked it that way, different from everybody else's. That's what made my hair fall out. But we, we I love that well, I love that well. And they filled it in, broke my heart. Uncle Vance, he dug a nut right beside it. This time put glass liners in it so it wouldn't have the mica dust in it. I missed the mica dust. It was Grandma's well, and I love Grandma's well. Next, that was her barn. I love Grandma's barn. Reminded me of God in a way. God said, I'm the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, Isaiah 57, 15. I love Grandma's barn loft. That's where the hen eggs were. That's where the chicken fights were. That's where we had a barn. <laughs> But Grandma's well. Uncle Vance loved that well so much, he's still living. He's almost 90 years old. He's the only living uncle of God. And, and he dug another one because he wouldn't have the memory of Grandma's well. Remember David? He's surrounded by the Philistines. He had three great soldiers of his, as his favorite, his famous ones. And they heard him say something. David said, oh, that I could have a drink of water from the well at Bethlehem. See, David was born in Bethlehem, and he loved that well at Bethlehem. His three friends heard him say it. They jumped up and busted through the Philistines' line, whooped a bunch of them, went down and got him some water. Brought back through the line, brought back through the line, and gave him that water. And David said, this is like the blood of men 
They jeopardized their lives getting this water. He poured it out on the ground because he wouldn't drink it. Jesus, my friend, poured his blood yes. out for you. you. And there's a fountain of living water. Yeah. There's blood that'll cleanse you, save you, wash you, make you whole and yes. pure and clean before God and present you blessed for the Father. Jesus applied it. He, he went through all of it. Hell, farm, damnation to get it for you. He suffered like no man's ever been suffered. Went down, whooped the devil, put the keys in his vestry, come out. Amen. He's got the victory for you. But you've got to trust him. Yeah. Time to start digging in the right direction. Some folks just ain't trying. They just ain't trying. They ain't even trying. David got some drink out of that water. Well, well, about that. Those who dig, seek, knock, pray, and ask, and they finally strike the water of life. They're excited people who get a fresh drink and are satisfied. Are you satisfied where you're at this morning? Slide off that pew into hell. Or slide off that pew into glory. Where are you at today? Where are you at today? If you died today, would you be satisfied with your death? Satisfied with your testimony? Satisfied with your faithfulness? Would you be satisfied to die today? Paul said to me to die is gain. To live as Christ, to die is gain. Would death be a promotion for you or a demotion? Are you satisfied? Have you hit the rock? Have you got a good drink? Are you a well digger? Are you afraid to go after God? It don't matter what your wife's going to say about it. It don't matter what your husband's going to say about it. Your children might not like this old time way, but honey, if you get it, you'll be glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> Genesis 16 is talking about be a real life holy. That well, the name of that well meant God see us meet. Genesis 26, Ezek, that's where the enemy fights. When you start digging, you're going to have some opposition. That's true. They're not gonna, he ain't going to let you just dig down there and hit that rock about six uh, inches deep. He, he's going to fight you all the way down. That's right. yeah. Yeah. I've been saved 61 years and he's, he's still fighting me. Uh, yeah. I know he ain't going to win. He knows he ain't going to win, but he still fights. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way he is. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this story and I'll, be, I'll try to hurry. One time there's an old woman in a church, and true story, and she always found something good to say about everybody. She never said nothing negative about anybody. She's just the sweetest little honey ever was. She had something to say about good about everybody. Two old boys talking about her and said, One said, Watch this, I'll get her. One of them said, Sis, yes. What do you think about the devil? Well, he's always on the job. <laughs> He ain't going to quit fighting you. Don't think he's going to. He ain't. He ain't going to quit fighting you. But thank God every time you get the victory. Cold chills runs all over you and the Holy Ghost gets on you and you start getting happy and he runs away from you. But he ain't going to quit bothering you. He's just the devil. That's his job if he's got such a thing. The devil's fighting at the, at the well of Esau. Joshua 18, 15, I love this, and it was a border well. The line shot to the well, like a cornerstone, like a peg, like a, a shot on a compass, and it cornered off. It was the old path. It was a landmark. We in America have left the old paths. We've left the old landmarks. Uh -huh. We've changed everything about it, including the Bible. Uh -huh. We've changed the way our church is carried on. Most churches got, got done at 15 after 12, they'd bar him. I'm just going to charge you overtime. <laughs> it's them singers' fault. They sung all morning. <laughs> but the fact is, friend, God has a real old-time, blood-bought, heaven sent feeling. You can feel it. You know you got it. Hey, One fellow said, you ain't safe feeling. No. I hate to have something I couldn't feel. That's right. <laughs> if, you get, if you trust him, you'll, you'll feel something. I was preaching one day and these three ladies sitting in a row and it was all three crying. And I said, this, what's wrong? They said, well, you preach. Well, you preach. Well, you preach. you got to feel something. I said, are you feeling anything? They said, yes, we are. 
See, you feel something when you're in conviction. You feel something when you're full of spirit. You feel something when you're ashamed of yourself. You feel something because God gives you that feeling. I ain't always shouting. Sometimes I'm pouting. But I'm feeling something. Hallelujah. Dig a well, friend. A boundary well. Jacob's well, that's where Jesus met the woman, the Samaritan woman. She said, how is it you, a, a, a Jew, speaking to me, a Samaritan? The Jews have no deal with Samaritans. But he got done with her, she was saved, run to town, telling everybody that. Yeah. Meet at the well. Isaiah 12, 3, talked about the wells of salvation. Genesis 29, talked about the well. Jacob there where he met, met Rachel. Glory to God. That, that, that. Have you ever went through Bible and found how many times men met women at Wales? Go to the well, young man. He'll, he'll find your wife. Come on. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 16, 22, talks about the well spring of life. Proverbs 18, 4, talks about the well of wisdom. Uh, Siku and Sira and Becky. Uh, prophecy, judgment, prayer. And the well. We need some well diggers. Yeah. Sometimes a woman will come to get on the altar. And I'll say, come on, ladies. And here a whole bunch come together around you hear prayer rising up. And they get up and they're satisfied. <laughs> Why? Because somebody touched the rock for them. Somebody helped them dig. Yeah. I like this old community prayer. Where everybody can, I'm here years ago. You could hear it. I'm just rattling the windows. But we don't pray like that anymore. Uh -oh. We used to have cows on our knees. We don't have them no more. We don't pray like we used to. We don't sing like we used to. Sometimes people don't even sing. They just sit there and listen while everybody else does. Yeah. My voice is cracky, but I'm going to let, let it be heard. Yeah. We've got to get to digging some wells. Yeah. The kids are thirsty. The children are starving. The next generation is up in a dry, thirsty wilderness unless somebody gets some wells dug. At your home, you need to start a well. Yeah. Prayer, Bible study. Yes, Get them young around. Turn the cell phone off. Hey, Turn the television off. Hey, I'm going to say this. It might make some of you mad, but it doesn't glad. Listen. <laughs> if we in Kentucky threw a ball into hell, half of Kentucky jump in after it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We want sports crazy. Yes. But we don't have time to read our Bible to our children. Come on. Don't have time to pray with our children. Uh -oh. Don't even hardly have time to love them anymore. Come on. Get out of the way, Brad. Yeah. We've got to get back to digging them well. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have opposition, but that's what makes the water sweet. Yeah. Yeah. We sing that song, Victory in Jesus. That's what makes the water sweet. It was called, we overcame the devil. Yeah. We overcame the wicked one. The Bible says God has put him under our feet. <laughs> We've got the victory. He can't get you if you're saved. So buckle up and dig a well, praise God. Let's pray. God in heaven, come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the wells of life, the wells of water, the wells of prayer, the wells of the Lord God. We need them. Some of us will let them get all clogged up. The devil stopped them up. The water ain't flowing. Polluted and messed up. Lord, help them clean them out. Help them to clean them out. They already got names. We don't have to rename them. We have to reclaim them. God, help us today. Fill these altars with people. Digging a well for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.